Sean O'Brien joins me right now. In case that doesn't ring a bell to a lot of you, I should point out he is the Teamsters General President, and you're probably thinking, then what the heck is he doing at the Republican National Convention? Well, he's going to speak to that convention tonight, but first he's speaking to us. Sean, very good to have you. Great to see you, sir. It, it, you could almost look like a fish out of water. How do you feel there? I feel great. I feel uh, very confident. Um, look, I'm here representing uh, working people in America. I'm here representing uh, the greatest union uh, in the entire country. And uh, my message is clear. We want to make certain that people understand, uh, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or independent, uh, how important it is to respect uh, working class America and also, you know, to encourage bipartisan participation on issues that face working people. Um, obviously, you raised this issue with Donald Trump. Uh, you want the same opportunity to speak to Democratic conventioneers when they gather in August. Um, what has Joe Biden told you about that convention? I haven't heard, haven't heard anything, sir. Uh, in the last time I was on your show, we talked about how we asked both the Republican National Convention and the Democratic National Convention. Uh, the Republican National Convention uh, welcomed me. Uh, I'm still waiting here on the Democratic National Convention. And look, it's controversial. We understand that. But, you know, the, the reality is our system's broken right now. And uh, we're divided right down the middle. I've got a constituency of 1.3 million members, uh, half vote Republican, half vote Democrat. So we've got to serve both equally. So you have not heard back from the White House on speaking at the convention, the Democratic convention, after all this time? We, we spoke first over a month ago. We did, yes. No, we haven't heard anything. Crickets. What does that tell you? Are you offended? No, I'm not offended at all. Look, I'm a lifelong Democrat, but I have no problem uh, working uh, with people that are going to help support working people. Um, look, I'm getting criticized from the left. I'm getting criticized from the far right. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, we've got to do what's best for this country, number one, and working people. And I believe it's to work bi bipartisan-wise uh, to find solutions to problems. Uh, often, two times, you know, we take a position each side and, uh, you know, there's a line drawn in the sand. It's not working. So the system's broken. We need to fix it. And I'm committed to working with anybody that's going to support working people, but more importantly, this country. We, are, we live in the greatest country in the world, and we need to uh, make certain that we protect it. We need to make sure we preserve it more importantly, promote it. Well, it, it says a lot that Donald Trump was very interested in, in, in hearing from you and letting conventioneers hear from you. Um, he didn't wait a month to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. No, and I'm sure he got criticized for uh, when the announcement happened, you know, the far right, uh, you know, called him to rescind uh, the invitation. And thankfully, he had the courage and conviction not to do that. Um, I hope the Democrats give us the same opportunity. Uh, you know, we've supported the Democrats uh, for the last 20 years, unwavering, uh, much to, um, you know, a lot of dissatisfaction within the union. Uh, and again, I'll state clearly, I'm a lifelong Democrat, but, yeah. you know, times have changed. You know, wants and needs uh, need to be addressed, regardless whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or an independent. So, you know, you're also an astute read of the tea leaves here. And you know, in the past, regardless what leadership at your union or other unions have recommended for president, um, the, the, the sort of rank and file, the core members of which you started out as one, um, generally did prefer and like Republicans, certainly by much greater numbers than was reflected in union endorsements. Is the same true at Teamsters? You have many more members who like Donald Trump than they do Joe Biden. Well, I don't know if that's accurate. I mean, we're doing polling right now. We've done a lot of polling uh, as far as, you know, reaching out to a certain demographic. Um, we've also done polling, straw poll uh, meetings within the 331 locals that we represent in the United States. Uh, and currently, we, uh, by the end of this month, we have a publication that goes out to 1.6 million active and retired Teamsters, uh, which will have a QR code which will give us a good gauge on where we're at. But, you know, it is neck and neck right now. And again, you know, it's a, it's, it's a decision that's going to be made uh, with a lot of transparency and, most importantly, inclusiveness of the rank and file members. Are you personally leaning toward Donald Trump? I'm personally going to lean towards the person that's going to lead this company, uh, country in the right direction. Um, I haven't made a decision. Um, but I'll tell you what, Nell, as soon as I do, I'm going to give you the exclusive. <laughs> it sounds like you're leaning in that direction, though. I mean, for one thing, Donald Trump got back to you at great risk to his own 
dates that many of them did not think this was a good idea, but he did it anyway. Um, and I'm just wondering, given the fact that you've had no response from the White House, uh, maybe eventually you will, maybe after this interview you will, uh, it just seems weird, doesn't it? It just seems strange that, uh, you know, we wouldn't be given an opportunity. And, you know, uh, this day and age, you know, for people to get upset because you want your voice heard on behalf of a diverse membership, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of discouraging. But, you know, I don't, I think you know me by now, I don't take anything personal. Um, and look, we'll just, we'll deal with the cards we have and we'll make the best decision we possibly can make on behalf of our members and on the working class America. What do you think of Donald Trump's uh, vice president pick, J.D. Vance? Young man, all of 39. So, J.D. J yeah, I'm, I mean, J.D. Vance, the short time that we've worked together, I mean, he's been great on Teamster issues. Um, he has supported, co sponsored an airline manufacturing bill that uh, addresses outsourcing of critical uh, airline maintenance to China. He's also supported. Um, uh, paid sick leave for our railroad workers. Uh, if you remember that situation sure. a couple of years ago, uh, where they weren't getting sick time, he was he stepped right up. He's also been um, very vocal and supportive of holding uh, employers accountable who try and skirt their obligation um, under an uh, independent contractor model known as DSP. So he's been right there on all our issues. Uh, we've publicly uh, stated it. And look, I, at this day and age, there's nothing better than having a U.S. Marine. Uh, represented uh, uh, as a vice president candidate. Um, you know, youth is great. Um, oftentimes, you know, uh, um, people are overlooked because of their age, but they should be uh, looked at because of their ability. I get that all, all the time, Sean. So you're so young. You're so young. What are you doing? Anyway, um, what is your yeah, you goal? You and I both. <laughs> what is your goal tonight? Look, my goal tonight is to uh, let everybody know how important the working class America is, how important uh, we have been. Uh, and I want to encourage people to have an open mind, to work together. You know, it's unfortunate this country is divided right down the middle. And, you know, we've got other, other uh, world leaders looking at us, laughing at us because they know there's a, a fracture in the infrastructure of the United States. And look, we're not always going to agree on everything. But at the end of the day, when there's situations where we can come together, work together and support working class America's but more importantly, uh, support the greatest uh, nation in the world. That's my goal tonight. All right. So when you look at the predicament with the Democrats here, you know, I was making the assumption that, you know, obviously Joe Biden will be the Democratic nominee. There are still people who doubt that that's going to be the case. Many of your colleagues in the union movement have been quietly looking for alternatives, convinced that Joe Biden is, is, is a losing candidate. And they're looking at other, other names even now, even after this weekend's uh, horrific developments for Donald Trump uh, and, and, and the near assassination. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Would you be more suited to talk at, at a Democratic convention if they let you, if it were a different nominee? No, I'm ready to speak whoever the nominee is, whether it's uh, President Biden or whoever that may be moving forward. And you are correct. You know, there's been a lot of talk about uh, other unions looking uh, for, for alternative candidates. There's been a lot of legislatures that have uh, been looking for an alternative candidate. You know, the reality of it is wh whoever is a nominee, whether it's President Biden or anybody else, um, we're hopeful to get an audience with them and explain, you know, what our, what our current concerns are, what our wants and needs are, just like we're doing here this week. So when you, you know, look at the economy right now, uh, the White House likes to say it's improving, inflation is off its worst levels, that's all us doing that, all this job creation, all us doing that. And some of them might look at you right now on the floor of the Republican convention saying, Sean, what gives? What do you tell them? Well, look, I, I can only speak for my membership. I mean, look, there's no, there's no disputing the facts. Inflation's high. Uh, we've got to curb that. You know, uh, there is layoffs uh, throughout our system in different industries. Um, so, you know, sometimes, you know, the picture that's painted isn't always accurate. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you know, I think we're all caught up in this political, uh, political fight right now, which is not helping the economy. It's not helping inflation. Uh, and again, this goes to my point of, you know, we've got to find solutions to these problems. It can't be, uh, we, we've got to remember who we actually work for. You know, the politicians work for their constituents who live in their communities. You know, our members uh, uh, are part of those uh, communities where they live. So these solutions need to be found. Do I believe uh, 
you know, we're in the greatest economy we're in right now. I don't believe we are. I think we could be. Um, you know, there's still a lot of people that uh, aren't working, um, a lot of industries that are suffering. But, you know, the reality is we, we, we are doing pretty good, uh, but we always can do better. I guess America just wants to know this as a final question. Um, are you going to wear a tie tonight when you address the Republicans? I am definitely going to wear a tie tonight. So I wear a tie most of the time, but gotcha. you know, I'll be honest with you. I didn't want to look like I didn't want to look like I was wearing the same thing twice. So I understand. Um, plus, you know, I'm a working guy. No, we don't always wear ties. No, no, nor should you. Um, Sean, thank you for for joining us today, and we're looking forward to your remarks tonight. Uh, historically unprecedented. I don't believe we had seen this, at least in the last century or so, a union uh, chieftain addressing. A Republican convention. So all eyes on Sean O'Brien, the Teamsters General President, tonight. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.